Dr. Nix says this government has to fall. Let's get into the budget. There's lots to get to. Um, Dr. Nix says this government has to fall. It's reckless. So federal budget 2023 uh, adds $50 billion in debt, right? Ooh, what? $50 billion. Oh my gosh, really? We've got that much money? Where? I thought we sent it all to Ukraine. Didn't we send all the money to Ukraine? Pierre Polyev says Canadians are out of money and Justin Trudeau is out of touch. After adding more debt than all the previous prime ministers, Trudeau adds another $40.1 billion. And that's the budget 2023, according to Pierre Polyev. And uh, his other minister or his uh, shadow ministers are getting in on this too. She quote tweets, or she, excuse me, Leslie Lewis quote tweets, Pierre Polyev and says, imagine the arrogance in making a budget, pr projecting a $40 billion deficit. That's not a budget, that's recklessness. The government admits deficit spending drives inflation, then announces a $43 billion, uh, $42,000, $4,200 per family in new spending. What an utter disrespect to Canadians. So yeah, we know inflation is a problem, but we heard you liked inflation with your inflation. So here's some more inflation. <laughs> oh, it's like pimp my ride. Um, CPAC is reporting Mr. Polyev responding to the budget, and the quote is here, but he says it, so I'll just play it. Here we go. The finance minister was telling us only a few days ago that deficit spending would spark even more inflation, higher grocery bills, more expensive housing, and other costs for families. And today, she rolls out a bonanza of $43 billion of new inflation, debt, and taxes that will be on the backs of everyday hard-working Canadians. We set three conditions for our support in this budget. One, that it bring home lower prices by eliminating the inflationary carbon tax and deficits. Two, that it bring home powerful paychecks with lower taxes that reward hard work. And three, that it bring homes that our young people can afford by removing gatekeepers to speed up building. None of these three, th three, these three demands have been met. All that they have delivered is more debt, more inflation, and more costs on the, on the backs of the hardworking and beleaguered people of this country. And that is why Conservatives are proud to announce we will be voting against yeah. this inflationary stand. So concerns. One of the concern. One of the things um, Polyev keeps talking about is building homes to meet the needs and make sure that homes are affordable for young Canadians. We need to look at the immigration. Immigration is flooding all of our systems and making it so that housing supply and demand are way out of whack. The demand is really high, and when your supply is or demand is high and your supply is low, the price goes up. And that's what's happening. Polyev doesn't talk about it. He's a conservative politician. Why isn't he talking about it? You know why he's not talking about it. Come on, right? Come on. Here's the House of Commons staffer. Um, and he says, this is the liberal budget in a nutshell. This is Christia Freeland. So sorry, but it's only 10 seconds. Here we go. The deficit last year was $43 billion. This year, the deficit will be $40 billion. Once again, that is a decrease. <laughs> That's less. <laughs> it's funny, right? I, it's one of those things where I'm, <clears throat> I imagine that I'm laughing while I'm kind of crying into my very, very stiff scotch, right? Like, oh, Ryan Garrison <clears throat> says, why does our federal government love taxes? Well, to pay for its bloated amount of employees, can anyone say service has improved? No, it's terrible. Are we benefiting in any way for the, in any way to of this size? <laughs> And so in 2010, the population of the federal public service, 2010 was 282,000. And in 2022, so 12 years later, it's 335,000. That's a, that's a big increase. Is that better? Um, the population has increased, but has it increased enough to need that big of an increase in workers? Okay, so I just did the calculations and I did it on a different computer, so I'm not going to show it to you, but the calculations for the increase, the, the increase in population, excuse me, the increase in the federal public service is 18.72% from 2010 numbers to 2022 numbers. And the increase in population is 11.76% from 2010 to 2022. So that's pretty interesting. And I did, th I did rough values, 34 million for population to 38 million. I think it might be 38 and a half million in 2022. But fundamentally, 11%, 11.76% increase in population, 18.72% increase in uh, the public service. Is it worth it? Are we getting value for money? No, of course not. We're not getting value for money. Sorry, that was a trick question. Um, <clears throat> Dan Alvis says, first, they promised back-to-back -back deficits of $10 billion.
Fair enough. Uh, later, it was a fiscal anchor. Then it became guardrails. Now it's fiscal restraint. The Trudeau government continues to stay this. Uh, this time is different, but it never is. They have one setting, always be spending, right? Andrew Coyne says, here's the fiscal restraint program spending over the five years. Uh, 2023 to 2027 is now running more than $20 billion a year over what was projected in last year's budget, more than $30 billion a year annually over the projections in fall 2021, and more than $40 billion over budget 2021. So <laughs> fiscal restraint, fiscal anchor. Uh, I mean, what do you expect when you put a, a Rhodes Scholar reporter like Christia Freeland? <laughs> and a Rhodes Scholar reporter she may be, but that does not make you a financier um, in the position of finance minister, right? What happens? What do you think? Well, what do you think? She spends money like she's got billions, right? Holy smoke, right? Here's Justin Trudeau, and he's making a big announcement. I'm just highlighting this part of this announcement here. He says, we're creating a new grocery rebate to provide support to 11 million Canadians. We're also going to crack down on junk fees, the unexpected hidden fees on everyday goods and services, and we're going to lower credit card transaction fees for small, small business owners too. Oh, right, right. Somehow I just don't believe them. Um, Tracy Wilson reads this, Tuesday's budget to include grocery rebates for lower income Canadians, and she says, we're at the food stamp phase of our ruined economy, right? And uh, here's Christia Freeland, and uh, she's responding to that. That's feminist economic policy, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, right. You're exactly right, uh, Ms. Freeland. Andrew Coyne says, yeah, the fiscal restraint thing. Um, and here is Christia Freeland um, talking about her fiscal restraint. Huh. This is this is her believing that she's delivering for Canadians. Maybe, maybe she knows that she's not. I, I'm not sure. Here's, here's Christia Freeland talking about her budget and fiscal restraint. Our country has a proud tradition of fiscal responsibility. That is a tradition we are determined to mm. uphold. We are refocusing government spending while taking great care not to reduce the services and direct support that Canadians rely on. By exercising fiscal restraint, we're ensuring that we can continue to invest in Canadians and in the Canadian economy for years to come, just as we have done since 2015. Because we know that investments in Canadians are also investments in our economy. This is what the U.S. Secretary of the Treasury, Janet Yellen, has referred to as modern supply side economics. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow invoking the U.S. cabinet is, is not, um, not the confidence booster that maybe Ms. Freeland thinks, thinks that it is. Ryan Garrettson says, here's the clip of Freeland where she declares that the liberal government is introducing dental care for every single Canadian, which is 100 percent not true. <laughs> Here we go. The points he made. I am, as I said, really, really proud that we are the government that is introducing dental care for every single Canadian. The points he made. <laughs> he says, you can see the moment she knew she messes up just after saying it. Her eyes and strange jerky motion tell the tale. She's always kind of a little twitchy, isn't she? I mean, a lot of people refer to her as twitchy. Um, and I don't think it's an endearing way. Not like the the Chinese calling Trudeau little potato. Here is uh, Paul Mitchell, and he says, what's this? The Trudeau liberals have just allocated $34.1 million to Canada's on-farm climate action fund to reduce fertilizer use by Eastern Canadian farmers. Crazy. Budget 23 proposes to provide $34.1 million over three years, starting in 23-24, to Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada's On-Farm Climate Action Fund to support adoption of nitrogen management practices by Eastern Canadian farmers that will help to optimize the use and reduce the need for fertilizers. So they don't want to talk about reducing fertilizer anymore, so it's been rebranded. And what has it been rebranded to? Uh, fertilizer or nitrogen management. Nitrogen management practices. Right. We've we've just created this nitrogen management practices, um, you know, group, and the nitrogen management practices group is going to advise you on how much nitrogen your farm can manage, in practice. <laughs> Goodness, real Andy Lee says, irony alert: Federal Budget 23 proposes allocating 13.5 million dollars over five years to establish a new national counter foreign intelligence office. This from the Liberal government blocking a public inquiry into foreign intelligence. Can't make this stuff up, folks. You take control of it, and then you have a puppet in there, and then the puppet says what the government wants them to say. And then you say, look, see, there's no Chinese interference. We looked into it, and nothing to see here. It didn't, it didn't influence the election. Nothing to worry about, Canadians, right? Why are you even asking about this? It didn't influence the election. 
because we want to know. How can you say that it didn't influence the election if you don't know to what degree it, it influenced the election? Oh, but it didn't, it didn't make a difference in the outcome. Oh, really? I'm just very skeptical, very skeptical. Here's the um, screenshot. Budget 23 proposes to provide 13.5 million over five years, starting in 23-24 for the National Counter Foreign Intelligence or Interference Office. Ha! They're laughing at us. Here's Christia Freeland saying, and I'm just showing you the ratio here. Um, so she says, we're making sure the very wealthy and our biggest corporations pay their fair share of taxes so that we can afford to keep taxes low for middle class families and invest in our healthcare system and social safety net. Right. So that's pretty interesting, except she got 568 likes and 825 comments. So that's a bit of a ratio. Um, people, the scales are falling off the liberals. People aren't happy. And when people aren't happy, they ratio tweets like that. Um, here's Blacklock's reporter. Fed's bill mysteriously high $20,000 a month to upkeep uh, for upkeep at Prime Minister's lakeside residence with charges vaguely marked for snow removal or pest control. It's uh, twenty thousand dollars a month. Can you imagine having to run a house at twenty million or twenty thousand dollars a month? That would be very, very expensive. I mean, is that groceries too? <laughs> it's and I've heard that he, Trudeau himself has eight thousand dollars in groceries. What what is he doing all the time? Is he rowing constantly? <laughs> not fat Trudeau, that's for sure. He's not rowing. Um, Rex Glazier is responding to the Globe and Mail. The Globe and Mail says the Trudeau Liberals built a budget on a cloud and collective amnesia. <laughs> And Rex Glacier says, at least nobody's talking about China interfering in our elections with the help of the liberals. The page has been turned. Will it get turned back? Right. The liberals desperately want to turn the page and it's been surprisingly easy. Right. So I think that there's going to be another shoe to drop. There's going to be a something. Somebody's going to bring it back up sometime soon. Maybe. National Post says our country can't borrow its way to prosperity. So this is businesses react to budget 2023. Um, <laughs> they're going to try, though. Andrew Coyne says, my take on the budget, if the government wanted to strangle economic growth, this is the budget that it would produce. Yeah, I think that that's not too far off. Unbelievable, says Miss. Um, budget 23 pledges mental health fund for black public servants. So if you're white, sorry, man, no, no money for you. Your mental health, do you identify as black? No. Okay, well then, sorry. Here, um, bushels per acre says, dumbest government in history. And um, this is the breakdown of the spending of, I think it's $500 million. Um, and it says, fighting systemic racism, discrimination, and hate. So they're using language to hijack our compassion and our understanding and our want to make sure everybody feels included and okay. And I'm not sure why Canadians feel like that's everybody's responsibility, but we do feel like that sometimes all the time, enough to make policies like this in the budget. Um, and <laughs> so the policy says, Canada's commitment to embracing diversity is an example to the world of a pillar of our national character. One in three people in Canada is a member of a racialized or re religious minority community. Uh, does Christian count? We work together, support each other, and learn and prosper by living alongside each other. However, many racialized and religious minority communities in Canada continue to experience barriers and discrimination. In response, the federal government has taken significant steps to fight systemic racism, discrimination, and hate in Canada. This includes all of these measures, before I read out the measures, all of these measures increase discrimina discrimination and hate by themselves being racist and based on discrimination and, by extension, hate. Hate by the liberal government for anybody who isn't in this list, okay? They are the ones being discriminated against. If you don't fit into this box, then you can go, I don't know, get some fentanyl and die, basically is how the government is, is treating people these days. And it's wild because the two, those two paragraphs, the first two paragraphs, use vague language to get you saying, well, yeah, like I, I agree that we shouldn't have racism, I guess, and discrimination. We shouldn't have those things. Um, and we don't want to have people um, experiencing barriers and discrimination, but they never ever give examples of what these barriers are. They just say the system's racist, right? It's ridiculous. And it's not, the, the system is not racist. I, I was in the system and it was not racist. It's ridiculous. Um, anyway, here it is. $85 million over four years to launch Canada's new anti-racism strategy. Can't wait. Um, $100 million over five years to launch the federal S2 LGBTQI plus action plan. 
$200 million to establish the Black Lead Philanthropic Endowment Fund and create a sustainable source of funding to support black communities. Up to $265 million over four years for the Black Entrepreneurship Program. $18 million over two years to support the Canadian Race Relations Foundation in delivering grants for community-level interventions to combat racism in Canada, including the rise of anti-Asian racism during the pandemic. Uh, $21.5 uh, $21 million to enhance legal supports for racialized communities and implementing the Nothing Without Us Accessible Canada Act to realize a barrier-free Canada for persons with disabilities by 2040. So it's notable just how precisely this government buys votes, right? If you're part of the in-group, you're part of the in-group and we're going to give you loads of money and you'll vote for us. Uh, Michael Geist is responding. Uh, the government's declining interest in innovation continues. The budget contained relatively few new innovation-related measures in stark contrast with past budgets that introduced big flagship programs and strategies for artificial intelligence, quantum computing, semiconductors, and intellectual property. The government committed $500 million in new funding to its strategic innovation fund that, lacks, er, that backs large projects by companies and said it was still working on a review announced in the 2022 budget of the decades-old scientific research and experimental development tax incentive. The word innovation and its derivatives appeared just 64 times in the budget compared to the previous Trudeau government's low of 100 in the last year's budget and high of 362 in 2017. So very interesting um, stepping back from technological innovation. It seems to me that the AI, like open AI, got a hundred million dollars or something like that from Elon Musk. And then they turned it into a for-profit business. So he said, how does that work? And now he's like, now Elon Musk has his own AI thing. Can anybody just buy an AI bot, an AI bot and tr start training it up? Do you have to own an internet property? Or can you just point it at public tweets? Um, how much is an AI bot? If you had an, a robot all the time that could potentially learn and do things on the internet, click widgets or whatever, how valuable could that be? Can anybody, where, where do you buy these AI things? If you know where to buy an AI robot, Please do link it in. There was somebody in twi on, on a, tw a tweet yesterday, actually, who said that they put Wikipedia onto a jump drive size, like USB, and they connected, to, connected it to an AI that could read the Wikipedia, so the world's Wikipedia knowledge, I guess. So it's kind of lefty, but whatever. Um, and then they could have a conversation with the AI that they created, like ChatGPT. And I thought, the world is, is bonkers. That's crazy. And and unbelievably smart. I didn't look into how I could replicate that. But now thinking about it, that sounds kind of fun, right? I don't know. It's interesting. So, so there's wild things that are happening. There's absolutely crazy innovations that are going on. Um, um, but when, when you talk about governments investing in AI and then having the investment from a government into an open AI system go private, and that, that is now a, a private for-profit company, that doesn't benefit humanity. That's weird. See, it, feel, it feels like a bait and switch, right? It feels like we were duped. Our tax dollars were duped if we're investing in that in, in budgets and in, in like, you know, government budgets. And then um, all of a sudden, that's a private company and you've got to pay for access or whatever. It's, it's very strange. Anyway, odd um, and notable that we're changing gears. Um, but I don't think we're changing gears in the right direction. We're, we're funding racist garbage. It's garbage. It's such a waste of money, and it's garbage. Holly Doan says, New aid for Ukraine puts federal spending in the region of $8 billion, according to Budget 23. Feds promise another $2.4 billion loan, through, though the country defaulted on foreign debts last July. Um, so, ha. Are we the suckers? I think we're the suckers. We're we're definitely the suckers, 100%. Max Bernier says a, B, a PPC government would abolish every new spending program adopted by the Trudeau government since 2015. Well, we'd need, we need a reset down back to 2015. That'd be good. Um, but I still, I mean, that, that'd be a good start. And then we've got to dismantle all the rest of it that made everything that's happened since Trudeau took office um, able to continue just unbelievable because we're obviously clearly very compromised and very very susceptible to being um, infiltrated by foreign governments and having our government do their bidding it really i mean i can't see another i can't see another excuse i don't think any government would sabotage their own country so completely i really just i, I can't see i can't see another explanation one thing I don't understand, though, is the number of the population that is going along with, you know, mutilating children, harming children, just fine, um, teaching children that their skin color is wrong. People are just fine with it. I don't understand why people don't get upset. I, that, that's one thing that I'm really confused about. I thought that once people understood what was going on, that they'd be upset. 
doesn't seem like people get upset. I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe it's just me. Okay, let's talk about